Welcome back to AM Northwest. Are you a saver or a spender? Here to share how knowing your money type can help you avoid risking your retirement, we welcome the author of Your Best Financial Life. Save smart now for the future you want. Retirement expert Ann Lester. Hi, Ann. Hi, how are you? Good. Well, I was disturbed by the uh, news story that I heard this morning and then thought of you, which was the news story that said, over half of Americans have not saved for retirement. That seems just insane to me. You know, saving is hard. Yes. Uh, and we can talk about we can talk about why and spending types. But the other thing that a lot of people don't know is half of all employers do not offer a workplace savings program like a 401k. No. Now, in, in Oregon, you guys are lucky because you've got the Oregon Saves program, and that actually helps people start workplace savings. Yes. But the easiest way to save is to have it automatically deducted from your paycheck. But if your employer doesn't offer a plan, then you have to do it by yourself. And that can be difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. You've got to think about your future. And one of your tips, of course, is to start early, no matter yes. how old you are out there, start early. And then you say, stay consistent, start saving. You know, time, people underestimate how magical time is. And time is when you're in your 20s and 30s, it's gonna, your money is going to double every 10, 7 to 10 years if it's invested in the market. And so if you've got your money that you invest in your 20s, doubling in your 30s, doubling again in your 40s, doubling again in your 50s, doubling again in your 60s, you're going to have 10 to 20 times the amount of money that you put away in your 20s waiting for you in your 60s. So it's really important to start early if you can. And I think people are intimidated, honestly, though, by like the, the stock market and that kind of th that thought. What, what are your suggestions to folks who are little? That feels like a little over my head kind of thing. You know, I, I get so cranky. I mean, I guess I'm part of the problem, but <laughs> I get so cranky with financial services professionals. That's why I bought, wrote this book, because we, we, you know, maybe I'm not a we anymore. They, they, they do it. Um, <laughs> used language that, you know, not on purpose, but I think a lot of people feel spoken down to, disrespected, yeah. confused, and it doesn't have to be that complicated. And, you know, one of the great inventions, and I, I'm a little biased because I designed and built the ones that JP Morgan runs now, Smart Retirement Target Date Funds, but one of the great inventions over the last 20 years has been target date funds that can take a lot of the decision making out of your hands if that's not not something you feel comfortable doing for yourself. So right. there, there's a great ton of innovations that let you automate a lot of this process and that can help a lot. Okay, talk to me about then you su you suggest and I've heard this before because it's super important, diversify. You don't yeah. want all of your money in one thing. That is super important if you are investing in individual companies and if you get lucky and time it right and you can look at Tesla or Apple or Nvidia or any one of these, you know, sexy stocks and think, "Boy, if I'd timed that right, I'd have so much money." Yeah. And we forget about the ones that kind of go in reverse. Like, you know, remember Peloton? That was yeah. flying pretty high a few years ago, and it's not worth much now. Right. Enron, right? These, you know, putting all of your eggs in one company's basket is dangerous. It's also a little bit dangerous to put all your money in one, I'm going to use some jargon, asset class. And by that, I mean stocks or large cap stocks, right? The largest 500 companies in the U.S. are in the S&P 500. That's not a terrible place to put all your money, but you probably ought to have a little bit in smaller companies, some money in international stocks too, and that's what we say diversify. We mean spreading your risk around a little bit. And understand your tolerance for risk, because as we get older, we don't ha our tolerance isn't, isn't uh, what it used to be, right? So many things well, aren't what they used to be, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and that's for two reasons, right? The younger you are, the more time you have. Right. So, you you know, if the market's down, it doesn't matter because you're not going to need that money for 30 years if you're in your 30s investing right. it for retirement. And sorry to say, and I'm, I'm getting a little older, too. Right. We process risk and sort of fast information differently as we age. And that can make people a little less willing to take risk as well. So as we age, we have less time to recover from losses and our brains are a little less able to kind of quickly react to stuff, too. And that also makes us a little more fearful, frankly, and unwilling to take the same kind of risk. So yeah. it's a good idea to de-risk when you're in your 50s and 60s for both of those reasons. And also, I've got to believe, you've got to stay informed about what's going on. Well, now, this is this is a great reason to think about automating things into something like a target date fund, which will de-risk automatically for you. If you work with a financial advisor, hopefully they're keeping an eye on the ball for you. If you are doing this by yourself, and many people do very successfully, it is important to stay on top of news. But I'd say even more important than that, 
is not to overreact to news and to have a process that you rebalance your portfolio among those different asset classes maybe once a year on your birthday. Yeah, oh, good idea, good idea. The book again is titled, Your Best Financial Life, Save Smart for Now for the Future You Want. And Lester, thank you so much. Very informative, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. All right, we'll be right back with more AM Northwest.